Hey brewers, in this video, I'm gonna show you a technique that you can use on brew day to make sure that you hit your target gravity going into the fermenter every single time. Let's get brewing. Have you ever been in the brew house on brew day and you found it difficult to hit your target gravity for your beer on a consistent basis? Your original gravity is really important because basically it sets out your alcohol, which is essentially the consistency of your product. And your consumers demand consistent product. It's what helps to grow your brand. But there's so many variables on brew day that can really clutter and create a lot of noise when you're trying to brew consistent wort. There's things like your mash efficiency, your runoff rate, your boil off in the kettle. Even the weather can play its part sometimes. So how do you make sure when you're on the brew house that you send your wort to the fermenter and that it's on spec every single time? Firstly, you need to accept that there's a lot of variables on brew day that are either out of control or really just not important. Take mash efficiency for instance. Mash efficiency isn't a number you should be targeting. It's just one of those things that just happens and you're gonna get what mash efficiency you're gonna get on brew day. So let's not worry about the numbers that we can't control and have a look at the numbers that we can control. And when it comes to your gravity, that's really the only number that you have control over. So on brew day, it's really important that you keep an eye on your gravity right the way through from start to finish. You need to measure your gravity and measure it often. Quite often what I do is I'll measure gravity in the kettle uh, whilst I'm running off from the Lord of Tun to the kettle uh, and I'll even measure my runnings as I go and I can quick pretty much calculate how much wort I should have in the kettle at the start of the boil. Because if I run too much wort off into the kettle, I'm likely to undershoot my gravity. And if that happens, the only way to fix that is to lengthen the boil and boil off more water out of that wort so that I hit spec. That's not really efficient in terms of time or energy and it's gonna mess with your hop utilization and send your IBUs out of spec. Early in my brewing career, I was taught this really neat trick on how to check your wort gravity in the kettle or whirlpool before you send it out to the fermenter to make sure that it's okay. Because once it's in the fermenter, you can't really change it. Here's how you do it. Run your mash off into the kettle as normal. When you're writing your beer recipe for whatever brew house you happen to be brewing on, Make sure you set your end of boil gravity to be about 10 to 20% over what your product spec should be. Run your boil program as per normal. Now, don't worry that your gravity is slightly higher and its potential effect on hop utilization. When you start out doing this, it's pretty much negligible and it's something that you can dial in later with a little bit of lab work. In the last five to 10 minutes of the boil, carefully grab a sample from the kettle. Take a gravity reading of your wort sample from the kettle and then run it through the dilution calculation. I'll come back in a minute and tell you about that. Then dilute your wort with hot liquor in the kettle or the whirlpool down to your target specification. The dilution calculation will tell you how much water to add. Double check your gravity again to make sure that it's right. Once you're comfortable with it and the wort's in the whirlpool and it's all ready to go, knock it out to the fermenter as you normally would. So what's the dilution calculation I hear you ask? Well, it's a really neat little cross multiplication uh, formula that helps you to understand what volume you've got and what gravity you've got and where you should be in order to hit your target gravity. Because I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret, gravity is just a ratio of water and sugar in your wort. That's it. So when you think about wort as a ratio of water to sugar, then a simple cross multiplication formula will help you to work out how much hot liquor to dilute your wort with at the end of the boil in order to hit your target gravity. And the beauty of this formula is it doesn't really matter what unit of measure you use. So if you're Australian like me, a normal person using the metric system, I use specific gravity and hectolitres in the brew house. But if you want my imperial system using American compatriots, you're gonna use barrels and Plato and that sort of thing. But here's the go. You can actually use firkins, litres, hectolitres, specific gravity, Plato, Bome, bricks. As long as you're consistent in your units of measure and how accurate you can measure volume and gravity, then this will work out for you. 
To make this calculation, you need to know the following. You need to know the current volume in your kettle, you need to know the current gravity in your kettle, and naturally you need to know your target OG for your product. So let's run through an example of how the dilution calculation works. Let's say I've got a hypothetical kettle and it's got 1500 litres in it, let's call it 15 hectolitres. The target gravity for this product is 1056, so we're going to call that 56 gravity points. From the sample that we took from the last 5 to 10 minutes of the boil, we took a sample, we measured it, and it came to 1060. So we're a little bit over gravity on this particular product. But how much do we need to dilute it with? That's easy. The volume at target gravity equals the current volume times the current gravity divided by your target gravity. Now, in this particular case, 1500 litres at 1060, in order to take it down to 1056, is 1500 times 60 divided by 56 equals 1607 litres. Once we get to the end of the boil, we can actually work out how much hot liquor we need to dilute our work with by subtracting the current volume, the CV, from the total volume at our target gravity. So if we go 1607 minus 1500, that's 107 litres. So we know we need to add 107 litres in order to hit 1056, which is our target gravity. Simple. Let's try it again with barrels and Plato. Let's say that I've got 12.82 uh, barrels in the kettle. Our target gravity for this beer is 13.7 Plato, and the current gravity at the end of boil is 14.7 Plato. Our volume that we should have at 13.7 Plato equals 12.82 times 14.7 divided by 13.7 equals 13.75 barrels. Again, let's subtract our 12.82 barrels that we've got in our kettle and we work out we've got a 0.93 barrel liquor dilution required to hit our target gravity of 13.7. As you can see, whether you use barrels and Plato or SG and litres or hectolitres, it doesn't matter, it's worked out the same. What we've done is we've added a small amount of hot liquor into our wort at the end of the boil and we've wound up hitting our target gravity. And we can be 100% sure that when we knock out and send that wort to the fermenter that it's going to be on spec. What's your technique that you use to make sure that you hit your target original gravity every time? Let me know in the comments below. If you've got an idea that you'd like me to run through to make your brewery operations more efficient and consistent, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, brewers. I'll see you next time.